Pixar is the king of animation, but there may be something more to their movies. Whether it's war, animal uprisings, toys becoming sentient, or humans leaving Earth after it turns to ruin, there's a theory that proves all Pixar films take place in the same universe. Yeah, you heard that right. Prepare to have your mind blown. Before we begin, subscribe to CBR and ring that bell to join our notification squad so you never miss a video. Without further ado, let's get into the Pixar theory. Ow. And you didn't believe him. Hey, you didn't believe him first. The Pixar Theory Origins the Pixar theory comes from the wonderfully wild brain of John Negroni, who has published tons of thought pieces about everything Disney and Pixar. The theory existed in some form since early 2003, obviously changing with the addition of more movies to the Pixar name. Negroni has even published a book on the Pixar theory. For this video, we'll be discussing the most updated version of the Pixar theory, which includes Inside Out, Coco, and The Good Dinosaur. These aren't included on the official Pixar theory site, but we have been on Negroni's site, so we'll be following that. Since this is, of course, an unconfirmed but convincing theory, it's not perfect. Let's hope you're buckled in because it's gonna be a wild ride. Now this will keep them rotten critters from stealing our food. The Good Dinosaur According to Negroni, around 65 million years ago, these dinosaurs weren't wiped out by a meteor, so they had more time to evolve and become intelligent. They've had their own language, performed chores, know about agriculture, and use dino-appropriate tools. The dominant dinosaurs are obsessed with survival due to the scarce food and hostile environments, while mammals, including humans, are beginning to thrive. Though dinos still die out, the evolution is different in this movie, causing many weird-looking creatures to emerge, such as the dreaded chicken-like cluckers, the anglerfish in Finding Nemo, and Kevin from Paradise Falls in Up. Magic will also come into play from this abnormal evolution and make animals gradually intelligent, but we'll get to that later. Foreshadowing. The scarcity of fossil fuels, another effect of dinosaur existing for more time, prompts humanity to look for alternative fuels, much before they would have in our real-life timeline. This is alluded to in the Cars franchise, since the Dynaco logo is a living dinosaur. As a result of this pressing oil crisis, humanity develops technology faster, which explains the advanced tech and syndrome zero-point energy seen in The Incredibles during the 50s and 60s. All in all, Good Dinosaur shows that when animals are left to their own devices in this alternate universe, they develop intelligence. I am Merida. Brave. Moving on to the 10th century, Brave ties in when Meridia discovered the Will of the Wisps, which is the original magic or human energy in this theory. The magic turns Meridia's mother into a bear and allows animals and inanimate objects to behave like humans. Magic was introduced to the world by a witch who mysteriously vanished through wooden doors. She experimented on various animals that acquired intelligence and personality and interbred them, eventually expanding their population. This witch is in fact Boo from Monsters, Inc., who used magic to time travel to this time while searching for Sully. Eventually, this magic would lead to superheroes. That took a dark turn there for a minute, didn't it? The Incredibles 1 and 2 Taking place in the late 40s, early 50s, and 60s, the government has found a way to harness human energy by utilizing supers to maintain order in the world. But Buddy, aka Syndrome, a wannabe superhero, created two things that bring their demise. Self-serving AI bots like the Omnidroid and the high-tech zero-point energy. Both superpowers and zero-point energy stem from the main magic seen in Brave. This is the pivotal moment where we see machines eradicating their only threat, supers. One of the signs of an upcoming robot rebellion against humans in this theory is seen when the Omnidroid, a highly improved AI machine, turns on Syndrome, its creator. Evelyn, aka Screen Slaver from The Incredibles 2, also mentions that people are obsessed with technology in her monologue. As supers die out and humans rely more and more on technology, the BNL Corporation evolves and inanimate objects like toys start to absorb zero-point energy. You see where we're going with this? All right. Ah, it's the chicken man! Toy Story 1 and 2 Okay, so it's the 90s now, and an inanimate object organized society is first shown. This is made possible thanks to the zero-point energy. These toys now live under their own code of rules in the secrecy of humans. The omnipresent BNL Corporation has gotten into the toy business and is using the unwitting toys to harness human energy, more specifically child happiness that the toys feed and thrive off of. Toys also learn that being abandoned by humans is dangerous, thus questioning their purpose in life. For example, Jessie feels resentful towards the fact that her former owner, Emily, abandoned her. Let that sink in for a moment. Nice. Finding Nemo and Dory 
Both Finding Nemo and Finding Dory take place within a year of each other in this universe, around 2003 to 2004. With their own advanced society, including schools and network systems, fish are the first intelligent animals we've seen that aren't dinosaurs. Birds are also shown to be intelligent, like Nigel. In Finding Dory, human intervention is also shown to help develop animals' intelligence, including when fish learn things about humans and their environment, like how Dory, who grew up in captivity, can read and speak whale. Dory's short-term memory loss would mean that fish are evolving very fast, with their intelligence failing to fully or properly develop in some of them. Even though they don't communicate with humans yet, fish show resentment and fear towards humans because they pollute the environment and cage them. I don't blame them. Fish are delicious. Ratatouille? It's a peasant dish. Are you sure you want to serve this to Ego? Ratatouille. In Ratatouille, Remy discovers his love for cooking and clearly displays human characteristics like walking on his hind paws, cleaning his hands, reading, and cooking. Here is where communication between humans and animals is first seen. Theory creator Negroni suggests that, after the movie, Chef Skinner spread the rumor that some or all animals were intelligent, which kind of makes sense since he was captured and tied up by a bunch of rats. I'd be a little upset, probably. This is the first time we see a real personal interaction between humans and animals, but it's for the purpose of controlling mankind. The jury's still out if Remy actually felt any sort of friendship with Linguini in this theory or really just used him as a walking, talking, cooking meat puppet. There's a visual for you. Ah, oh, heck, you don't know me from G.I. Joe, but when I look at you, I feel like we were made, made for, for each other. other? <gasps> Toy Story 3 in Toy Story 3, a postcard from Up is seen in Andy's room. While some say Up happened before Toy Story 3, Negroni puts it taking place after. So that's what we're going with as well. Since the events of Toy Story 2, toys have been through a lot with humans. Lots of Hug and Bear shows a strong animosity towards mankind after his owner replaced him. Moved by hatred, he starts to lead a toy population and believes that every toy will sooner or later be discarded by their humans. This provides another reason for why human-made objects are motivated to take over. In this film, we briefly see that Buzz Lightyear's batteries are produced by the mega corporation by and large BNL which shows their slow takeover and also how the company is linked to sentient toys I believe I made my position to your boss quite clear up Somewhere between 2011 and 2016, Carl is forced to give up his house to a corporation, possibly BNL, because they are expanding. This is foreshadowing, as this corporation is the cause for polluting the Earth and wiping out life in the distant future. As a result of technology overreach, Carl discovers that animals can communicate with humans and sees the bitterness that they have. Charles Muntz effectively trains an army of dogs using a version of the old magic in the collars that let the dogs talk. This is the start of the tipping point between animals and humans, leading to a massive uprising years later. Yeah, you heard that right. A war. Talking dogs, an adorable war. Inside Out in Inside Out, set around 2015-ish, we see that the key to this special energy that gives human-like abilities to everything, from dinos to toys, is emotion. A child's joy is shown as much more powerful and active than the other emotions, while all emotions cooperate with the same level of importance in adults. This goes back to the idea of toys living off the kids' happiness in Toy Story. Combined with Bing Bong possibly being inspired by Riley's monster, Negroni sees this as a connection to Monsters, Inc., in which laughter or joy is said to contain much more energy than screaming or fear thus being more effective to sustain the monster energy. But we'll get to that one later. It's also thought that the emotions are what keeps AI like Wally -E functional, and that's why his fascination with humans made him the last surviving Wally. -E. Is it too obvious? I think it's just the right amount of obvious. Coco. The theory on Negroni's site has been updated with a part two, but it doesn't say how Coco affects the actual universe. Lucky for us, the folks on YouTube over at Super Carlin Brothers offer up some interesting thoughts. Coco is all about remembering those who've died. If you're dead and your descendants have a picture of you on their ofrenda, you're able to cross back into the real world. However, once the last living person forgets that you're dead, you disappear from both the land of the living and the land of the dead. This is called a final death. That's why Hector is super desperate to get his picture on that ofrenda. We see Hector's friend, Shisharian, suffer his final death and he fades away like Bing Bong in Inside Out when Riley forgot him. So basically, what Super Carlin Brothers are suggesting in the Pixar theory is that it's memory that gives life and that ties into pretty much every entry in this video. Toys get abandoned, supers get forgotten, fish fight to remember their own past. You didn't think this would get that depressing, did ya? Minnie, I know exactly where we are. Yeah, we're in the middle of nowhere. Cars 1, 2, and 3 
Sometime after Up, there was a war between animals, humans, and machines. The animals fought to stop mankind's pollution, but the humans are saved at the last second by machines. However, by this point, the planet is unsustainable, so the rest of the humans are sent to live in space by the machines. And what happens to Earth? The cars take over. Negroni suggests that the Cars franchise takes place after this war. While set on Earth, no humans are seen, yet there are still some animals. The corporation BNL, which largely caused Earth's air pollution, is also responsible for sending the humans away. As the planet degrades without human energy, we find ourselves at… Wally. -E. Now we're getting into the thick of this thing. Since the 50s, BNL had controlled the whole world and ravaged its resources. Fast forward to 2775, and Earth's only inhabitants are Wally -E and a cockroach. Wally -E has survived due to his affinity with human culture and his friendship with the cockroach. This helped maintain his personality and fulfillment because, if you haven't learned anything from this video yet, all Pixar feelings are centered around emotion and memory. The humans, extremely dependent on machines, have forgotten their past and purpose over time. By the end of the movie, though, they return home, and the shoe containing the last plant has grown into a mighty tree, which is, in fact, the same tree near the ant colony in A Bug's Life. A Bug's Life Thought to be around the year 2898, after nearly a century of repopulation, human energy returned a spark to the world promoting the insects, especially ants, to form the most complex non-human society so far, with cities, cloth wearing, and even their own machines. They use leftovers from the human world, such as garbage, to make their cities. There are no humans to be found in this movie, perhaps because they don't exist anymore are still in space or just not a huge threat to the bugs. The jury's still out on exactly where we are in the timeline, but prior to Wally, -E, an ant can live just three months. In A Bug's Life, these ants all survive an entire summer and allude to being around for quite some time. One ant states that he feels 90 again. This indicates that ants are sturdier, maybe as a result of evolution and mutated genes, probably thanks to BNL. Later, in the distant future, animals start evolving into the dominant species. Is that that movie Them? You know, the ants kill everybody? Mm, kids these days. They just don't get scared like they used to. Monsters You and Monsters Inc. The animals who lived on Earth gradually mutate due to the radioactive population. Thanks to BNL, they evolve into the monsters seen in the Monsters Inc. franchise, becoming the most advanced society in the timeline. But they're even more advanced than humans, since the dimension to where monsters travel to to obtain their source of energy is actually the past. Yeah, you heard that right. The humans in the movies are from the past. The current year on Earth is supposedly anywhere between 4,500 and 5,000, and the doors open up to the past after the monsters discover humans sustain their civilization. By the end of Monsters Inc., monsters find out that laughter contains far more energy than fear. Like we said earlier in the video, the laughter, happiness, and joy of children seems to be the most valuable resource to animals and toys alike. Again, this all circles back to Boo being the woodshop witch in Brave. It's all tying together, folks. After the events of Monsters, Inc., Boo tries to find a way to return to the monster world and find Sully. Remembering that wardrobe doors could lead to him, she eventually learns about their time travel properties and begins to use them, and it all goes in a loop again. Oh my god, mind blown! Your stunned silence is very reassuring. There you have it. What do you think of this theory? What other Disney theories should we debunk? Let us know in the comments section below and don't forget to subscribe to CBR for more videos like this one. Thanks for watching.